This is our complete roundup of the best video editing apps for iPad in 2023. iPad video editing has seriously leveled up recently and there's now everything from awesome free video editing apps right through to advanced pro level options. So stick around and find out the best iPad video editor for you. So after trying and testing all the top options, these are my top picks right now. Option number one is VN Video Editor. This is a great free video editing tool with a paid option as well. But this one will work on iOS, on Android. There's also a Mac desktop version as well. It's a really easy to use, really intuitive, but still very powerful video editing tool. I love that it gives you great control over your actual editing. It makes it really easy to get into the frame by frame level stuff so that you do have that high level of accuracy. There's a bunch of effects, a lot of transitions, in there as well. And out of all the options out there, this one really packs a punch in terms of being easy to use, pack in a ton of features, but also making editing fun. This one is actually fun to use. I absolutely love how easy it is to switch between different project types. So if you're starting out with say a widescreen video and you wanna switch it up for an Instagram story or a short or a reel, they make that process really, really easy. And more recently, they've been adding a lot more effects in here too. Now, this is actually one of those rare cases these days where the free version of the app is actually really decent. And you're not really required to upgrade to the pro version unless you you do wanna unlock all the extra features, things like extra templates and fonts and things. There's also some more advanced project sharing options with encryption, and it also increases the number of projects that you can be working on at any given time as well. But the cost to unlock that pro level plan is around $10 per month or around $70 for the year. So I think VN Video Editor is a great beginner right through to an intermediate level editing tool. It's definitely not to the extreme of the amount of effects and things like some of the other tools I'm about to cover. It also doesn't have a massive focus just yet on AI tools. Again, like some of the other options coming. But overall, it's one of the best tools out there for a lot of people, regardless of your skill level. App number two is CapCut. And this one is very similar in so many ways to VN Video Editor. This one as well does work across a lot of different devices. So there's a Mac version, a Windows version, iOS and Android. There's also a cloud or an online based version too, but it is pretty cut down feature wise when you're comparing it to the dedicated apps and programs. So the overall interface editing style and editing workflow is very, very similar to VN Video Editor. Up until very recently, it was very hard to make the call as to which is the better option here, VN or CapCut. But now I see the two are different with some of the changes that have been made, but also the pricing options as well. But I would say straight out, the biggest difference between the two is the now level of effects and transitions and things that you can do inside of CapCut is definitely next level to what you've got in VN. Now for most videos that people are making, you might not be needing those things. It's not something that we add a bunch of in our YouTube videos or even in our social media content too. So it is gonna come down to the type of videos that you're making and what it is you actually want. But CapCut now does have a big focus on effects, transitions. The other thing that's probably worth noting is that CapCut is actually banned or restricted in a few countries out there and who knows how many more are going to follow. And that's because it's actually made by Byte Dance, who is the same company that makes TikTok. So there's countries out there that are just putting a blanket ban or restrictions in place around those apps. So I personally don't think that's a deal breaker. <laughs> Obviously it is if you're in one of those countries and can't use it. But outside of that, I do think it's an awesome app with a ton of functionality and a lot of effects and things built in as well. The other thing that's changed is they're now pushing their pro plan, their pro account for CapCut much more than they ever did before. So what you're starting to see in there now is a lot of the best effects and tools are no longer free because there is a free version of CapCut, but now they're trying to move a lot of the good stuff over into the paid version. Again, not a deal breaker because the price in my opinion is still very reasonable considering what you're getting access to. But if you're someone that was using it when it was totally free, then yeah, it's now more expensive. Or also if you're comparing this to VN where most of the functionality is still free, then it's gonna come down to again, what is it you're actually looking for? So right now to upgrade to the pro version inside of CapCut, you can purchase a single one month access to CapCut for $9.99. You can also then jump on a subscription and pay monthly $7.99, or there is also an annual option as well for $74.99. So again, CapCut is a really good option. If you are someone at that beginner through to 
intermediate level. It is good to see that they are bringing more and more pro features in, specifically around color grading. But the big benefit for CapCut is for those of you that are looking for the next level of effects and transitions and AI tools. It's got all of that. So the next three options I'm gonna cover are definitely aimed at the more pro level user. Yes, you can still use these apps if you are more on the beginner side of things, but the learning curve is going to be a little bit more than what it was with the first two apps. So the next option then is LumaFusion. And this is one that is really the OG when it comes to professional grade video editing apps on iPad. It really packs a punch and it's got so many more pro grade features in there, things that you would expect to find on professional desktop video editing software. So for instance, the level of control that you have over your clips, the adjustments that you can make, it really is next level in these apps versus the first two. So the standout features for me are things like the ability to export your timeline. So you can start your project on LumaFusion and you can transfer it over to your desktop or your laptop and actually import it into Final Cut Pro on there for finishing or to continue your editing. There's also a great multicam feature as well. This is an additional purchase with the app, but I really like the way that they've done it. It makes it so seamless and easy to sync up your clips and to edit your multi-camera videos. I also love that it's got a customizable interface as well. So you can actually change up the interface and change up what you're actually seeing on screen and the sizing of different things to help maximize the screen real estate that you've got on your iPad. It's not like we're using a big desktop screen here. So having the ability to switch things around definitely makes it easier to work in there. There's also external hard drive support in there as well, which does work really, really well. It's a full external drive support, unlike one of the other apps we've got coming up, meaning that you can import and edit directly from your external drives and even save your video project back to your external drives without needing to copy them over to your iPad itself. I'm also a big fan of the pricing options with LumaFusion. It's a one-time purchase for $29.99, which is incredibly cheap considering what you're getting access to. So for those of you that don't like to be on another rolling monthly subscription, because hey, they add up. So LumaFusion would be a great option for someone who's at that intermediate level through to advanced, someone looking for more of those pro level features that you would normally find on desktop. LumaFusion could be a good pick for you. The next app is the new kid on the block. This one is Final Cut Pro for iPad. Finally, it's out on iPad. It's actually been out for a little while now, but it's something that a lot of people were waiting a long time for. Now, while there's obviously a lot of similarities to the desktop version, they've also re-engineered the way that you edit on the iPad to make it really friendly and easy to use on the iPad. Now, the overall interface of this actually is very intuitive, considering that this is one of the more professional apps out there. It doesn't have as much of a difficult learning curve as say LumaFusion or even the next option. So while it is designed as a more professional tool, it's still going to be easy enough for a beginner to jump in here and to figure everything out too. So if you're someone who's coming from editing on Final Cut on the desktop and you're jumping into this, you're gonna be able to get up to speed really, really quickly, but it's also a little bit of rethinking in how you're actually editing as well. But personally, I absolutely love this new editing approach and I think this is the most fun video editing app out there. And hey, if you're doing something that's fun, you're gonna do more of it. So if you want help making videos, try to find something that's fun and easy for you and you're gonna do more of it. So part of the way that they've re-engineered Final Cut on the iPad is that they've introduced more touch controls as well. Yes, it will still work with the Apple trackpad and the keyboard, so you've got access to those as well and a lot of your shortcut keys and things will work but they've also introduced this new jog wheel concept and also moved a lot of the core functionality, the buttons and things that you're gonna be pressing a lot to the left and the right side, which is where you're gonna be holding your iPad. Meaning that it's so easy to navigate through your clips, to quickly trim down your footage, make cuts without needing to move stuff around, all with just moving your thumbs, essentially. Now on their website, they do state that this is the tool to help you record, to edit, to finish and deliver all from your iPad. So it's no longer just a video editing tool. They've also integrated some more pro level camera functionality in there too. Think of this like the built-in camera app on your iPhone or iPad, but with more pro level features, letting you lock things down and customize up your settings and things. And with the clips that you're recording in there, they can drop straight into your editing timeline, ready for you to edit. I can see why they've done it and I like the workflow, but I don't think it's going to be something I'll ever really be using. 
If I did wanna shoot something on my iPad, I'd probably be using a more pro level tool just for that, something like Filmic Pro, and then you could use Final Cut to edit. Now I also love the new drawing support and functionality in here too. So if you are someone that wants to quickly annotate your footage or write something on screen, or even explain something by drawing it out and you've got the Apple Pencil, then Final Cut makes that really, really easy. And it's something that if you were doing it any other way, would take you much, much longer to complete. So it's pretty cool that you've got that built in here too. Just like LumaFusion and the next app that I'm gonna to mention too, there's built-in multi-camera support. And again, they make it really, really easy. Multi-camera editing back in the day used to be an absolute nightmare to sync everything up. So I love that LumaFusion, I love that Final Cut, and the next app has all of this sorted and makes it really, really easy to sync up your clips and also switch between them to choose the different angles. Now, in terms of downsides or things to be aware aware of. Hopefully this is stuff that they can change and fix over time because it is still so new. There is external drive support, but it really just helps you import your footage onto your iPad. So if you're bringing in any clips to edit from an external drive, it's automatically gonna copy those over to your iPad, meaning that you will need to have enough storage capacity on there to hold all of those files. The other one is in regards to the color correction tools. There's a bunch of tools in there to help you color grade and you can get some great results with it. But in terms of the functionality and the tools, it's not like you're finding in a lot of the other pro grade apps. This is just sliders that you can move around. There's no real color wheels or curves or things that you're used to if you're used to more pro grade apps or more pro grade tools. The other thing that you need to be aware of is that this won't work on a lot of the older iPads. It needs to be one of the newer ones. I've got the list on screen of what will work, but essentially it needs to be really an M1 or an M2 chip. And also while it does have some cool built-in effects like automatic background removal and auto reframing, it's definitely not to the level of effects and AI tools and stuff as CapCut. Now there is also integration between Final Cut on iPad and on desktop as well, meaning that you can start your project on your iPad, you can transfer your project over to a desktop Mac computer and you can continue editing. Now at the time of filming this, we can't go back the other way. So I'm hoping that that's a feature that can be added in at some point. It would be awesome just to have a fluid workflow no matter which device you wanted to use. Now in terms of pricing, you can jump on a 30 day free trial, but after that it is a subscription. So you're paying $4.99 per month or $49 per year to access Final Cut on iPad. So rounding this out, I do think this is a good all rounder. This is gonna be suitable for a beginner to jump in because it is easy enough. It's not probably as intuitive as a VN or a CapCut, but it is a little bit easier to jump in and to figure stuff out than say LumaFusion or even the next option as well. But it does have a lot more pro level features as well, making it great for someone beginner right through to a more advanced user. And the last one then is DaVinci Resolve for iPad. And this one hands down has to be the most professional level video editing tool out there. Now, if you're not aware already, DaVinci Resolve is one of the top video editing tools out there on Mac, on Windows and on Linux. This is literally software that TV shows and Hollywood movies are using to edit and to color grade. It's a pretty powerful package. But this iPad version has a lot of similarities and things from the desktop version. So essentially the desktop version is broken down into these different pages, which are the different steps of your video editing process. From importing and cutting down your media, to color grading, to adding motion graphics and effects, sound design and audio, right through to distribution and exporting. But what they've done on the iPad version right now is they've actually brought over two of those pages, the cut page, so a cut down editing interface, but also the color correction interface too. Now, for those of you that are interested, there's actually a bunch of YouTube videos and we'll link some down below that will take you through how you can unlock all of those pages and use a lot of that core functionality from the desktop version actually over on iPad. So this gives me hope that at some point, hopefully in the not too distant future, that we'll actually have the full capabilities of the desktop software fully supported on the iPad too. But personally, when I first heard that they weren't bringing the editing page over and it was just the cut page, I was really skeptical with how good it would actually be, given that whenever I use Resolve, I'm normally doing most of my stuff in the editing page. So it was a little bit of rethinking and relearning as to how this workflow actually works, and it's actually really powerful. You actually have a lot of your core editing functionality that you can access and use on this cut page, making it a great thing to actually use 
on your iPad. This is literally pro grade tools that you can use to color grade, color correct your videos too. This also works with their cloud service as well, the Blackmagic Cloud, so that you can transfer your projects to and from your computers as well. Meaning you could start a project on your iPad, finish it on your computer, or even go back the other way. There's also full external drive support as well, just like LumaFusion had, where your external storage is just picked up as an extra drive, where you don't need to rely on using your iPad storage to have to store everything. Plugin support, there's external hardware support for things like their speed editor. So again, a lot more advanced functionality and tools and things in here. And also while DaVinci Resolve for iPad is designed for the newer M2 and M1, so the more powerful iPads, it actually does run on some of the older ones as well. There are some limitations to that in terms of resolution. Depending on the device, you might be limited to 1080p videos instead of 4K, but it's awesome to see that this works on some of the older devices too. Now, I personally, I do love editing on DaVinci Resolve on iPad. It does really feel like a desktop app on the iPad, which can be good. But what I find is I want to be using it then on the iPad with a mouse, with a trackpad, with the keyboard connected, not just holding the sides, sitting on the couch and editing like I'm now drawn to do with Final Cut and its new interface and its new tools, which you can do on Resolve as well, but it just feels way more clunky and you're probably better off using it with the keyboard and mouse or keyboard and trackpad. So again, definitely not a deal breaker, just something to be aware of in terms of the usability of it. But also I think that's a testament to how good those new controls are on Final Cut 2. Now, in terms of pricing, there is a free version of DaVinci Resolve, just like there's a free version on the desktop that gives you access to a lot of the core functionality in there, totally for free. So just on that fact alone that you get access to a lot of pro level tools here for free on your iPad as well, is pretty amazing. But there is also a studio version, which is a one-time fee that you can use to unlock extra effects and more professional grade tools as well. And that's gonna set you back around $95, again, as a one-time purchase. So if you are someone who's looking for the most professional grade tools, again, on your iPad, then it's gonna be very hard for you to go past DaVinci Resolve whether you're jumping on the free or the paid version. And now to round all of this out in some sort of conclusion, if you're after something simple, something easy to use, then VN Video Editor could be the best one for you. If you're someone who does wanna have a lot of extra effects, a lot of AI functionality and transitions and filters and those sorts of things, then it's gonna be hard to go past CapCut. From there, I think the decision gets a little bit harder with LumaFusion, with Final Cut and DaVinci Resolve because the three of those are really different offerings as well. You can get great results in any of them and it really is gonna come down to personal preference and your specific needs and your specific skill levels as to which is gonna be the best one for you beyond that. In these sorts of videos in the past, it was a hands down win to LumaFusion because there was no other competition. And I still think it is an amazing option, especially considering everything that is in there. It's probably actually the most complete package right now. And that could definitely change if DaVinci Resolve unlocks those other pages. And I'm also really interested to see what the next version of the Final Cut app is as well. Again, it's still so new. But the one that I am most pumped on right now is actually the Final Cut app. As I said, it is the most fun to edit in. I think that is really important. And I'm not sure if that's just because it's new and a new approach to the editing. But to me, it's fast, it's easy, and it's fun. And that means that I'm just gravitating to towards it. It means that's the app that I'm opening up the most when I want to edit on the iPad. But if I do need to do something specific like color grading, which is really where Final Cut is dropping the ball in comparison, then that's where DaVinci Resolve is an absolute no brainer. Now, if we were using DaVinci Resolve on desktop as well for producing our videos, then that might make it a no brainer for us to also use that on iPad too. But I'm also, again, really hanging out until hopefully they release those other pages. So those are my thoughts and opinions. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. As always, we've got a bunch of resources down there to help you level up your filming, your editing, your YouTube growth right through to your monetization. So check those out and I will see you in the next video.